wait, why is Greenland full of ice? But Iceland is full of green. What the hell is going on? What's the deal with that? Who names these places and how do we arrest them for crimes against common freaking sense? Well, it's funny you ask actually, because that's what this presentation of mine today is all about. The story of Iceland's name is pretty simple. Some guy from Denmark set out across the sea in the winter and eventually he stumbled across this new place and it was full of ice. And he went back home to Denmark and he said to his two friends, they were probably called like Den and Mark. He said, guys, you'll never believe this. I found this new land and, it, and it's full of ice. I'm trying to think of what to call it. <gasps> no, in reality, what actually happened is this Danish guy had such a terrible time in Iceland in the winter. I don't know, maybe he forgot his puffer jacket or something, but he had such a bad time that he decided to call it a name that would kind of discourage people from ever wanting to go there. So it was less of a, guys, you won't believe this, I found a, a land full of ice and more of a, Stay away from that place, it's full of ice. Now, funnily enough, the story of Greenland is exactly the same, but also the opposite. So basically, Iceland had been a thing for a while at this point and everyone was settling in very nicely. You know, they'd probably realised by now that summer was a thing. You know, they, they'd already set up the supermarket chain at this point, so they had all the fish fingers and frozen vegetables that they could ever need. Anyway, the people of Iceland were all getting along with each other really well, apart from with one person, who everyone kind of knew as the annoying neighbour. And his name was Eric the Red. Little known fact, Eric the Red actually got his name because every time he would have a bag of Skittles, he, he would always leave all the red ones till last because they were his favourites. <laughs> now, we all know someone like Eric. Someone who never mows his lawn, plays his music way too loud, kills all of his neighbour's slaves by running them over with boulders. The, the classic annoying neighbour. No, it's true to say Eric was a bit more on the extreme end of annoying. He was sort of the world's first troll and he had a bit of a habit of playing practical jokes on everyone. His first prank came in the year 982 AD. Uh, and listen to this one guys, because this, this set everything in motion. The guy was playing 4D chess. So Eric had managed to marry himself into a rich family, which means he had a small amount of slaves at his disposal. And what else are you gonna do with slaves if not a little bit of tomfoolery. <laughs> so Eric ordered all of his slaves to go onto his neighbor Valtyov's farm and just cause a huge landslide of rocks that ruined all of his crops. And all the people in the village were probably like, classic Eric, classic boulder prank Eric. But this Valtyov guy, he was not happy. He was fuming. His farm was ruined. All of his fish fingers wouldn't grow now. Did I mention it was a fish finger farm? Imagine that, all of your hard work, fields of fish fingers ruined by one avalanche. So in a fit of rage, Valtyov got his friend, Eolf the Fowl, to go and kill all of the slaves that had caused the avalanche in the first place. I mean, listen, you, you don't want to mess with Eolf the Fowl. I mean, who else is this Valtyov guy friends with, like Azog the Defiled or something? Of course, in response to this, Eric was like, what the hell, man? It was only one little boulder prank, jeez. And then he killed Eolf the Fowl, and he killed Eolf the Fowl's friend as well, just to rub it in. Classic. Eric, classic murder prank. The old bait and switch, get them riled up and then kill them all. <laughs> Enrage them with the avalanche and then hit them with a sweet bit of death. And at this point, all the villagers were like, hey, 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 oh, did he? I think he just killed someone. And they all decided they'd had enough of Eric's antics and they banned him from Iceland for three years. Imagine that, three whole years without any grocery shopping. So of course, Eric had to go. And he set out on a boat to the east thinking, <laughs> typical, can't get away with anything these days. It's political correctness gone mad. Can't even kill a guy these days without everyone making a big fuss. Stupid cancel culture. Oh, you cause one avalanche and all of a sudden you've crossed the line. Comedy's dead, man. Comedy is dead. So feeling pretty hard done by, he sailed all the way to a little island off the coast of the UK where he spent the rest of his three years. Now, before he left Iceland, Eric had asked his friend to take care of the wooden beams in the roof of his house. At the time in Iceland, they believed the wooden beams in the foundations of each house had these kind of mystical powers. It's like if Dumbledore was a piece of scaffolding. After his three-year exile was up, Eric sailed back to Iceland only to find out that, for some unexplained reason, 
He couldn't get his wooden beams back. So what do you do when you can't obtain your own mystical wooden beams? Well, you steal someone else's mystical wooden beams instead. Unfortunately, Eric was caught in the act by a man named Torgust, and Torgust was like, Hey! Those are my wooden beams, give them back! But Eric didn't give the beams back, and instead he killed all of Torgus' sons. Classic Eric, go straight for the sons. And all the villagers were like, Pop off, king! <laughs> That's the best killing children prank I've ever seen! Oh, we should probably banish him again. So Eric was exiled for another three years. But this time, instead of going east, he decided to sail west. All of the while thinking, <laughs> Typical. You kill one child and all of a sudden you're problematic. Bunch of snowflakes, man. Snowflake generation. But before long, his bitterness faded away as he discovered a whole new land just for himself. Now, this new land that he discovered was pretty brutal. It was cold and snowy for most of the time. There was very little places you could grow crops. The wind was unbearable. There wasn't any 4G or like Wi-Fi or anything. You only got like E on your phone. It was pretty tough going basically. But against all the odds, over his three years there, Eric actually managed to establish a bit of a home for himself. Being by himself, it was getting a bit lonely though. And if he was gonna properly settle in this place, he would need some more people. Now he hadn't forgotten about how the people of Iceland had banished him three years ago. And so he knew it was gonna be a pretty difficult task to actually convince anyone to settle in this new place with him. <laughs> And this is where prank number two begins. Eric decided to name this country that was full of ice, G Greenland. Ooh, ooh. Ho oh, ho, hook, line and sinker, baby. That's right guys, it was the world's first example of false advertising. So naturally, Eric went back to Iceland and he said to all of the people there, he said, Guys, you won't believe this. I found this new place. It, it's so beautiful and green and the sun always shines there and there's trees and flowers everywhere and the rivers are made of chocolate and everyone who moves there gets a free iPad. And so everyone in the village was like, wow, Eric, this sounds amazing. Sign me up. Uh, wait a minute. This better not be another one of your silly little pranks. And Eric was like, no cap, man, no cap. And all the villagers were like, well, okay then, let's go. So they filled 25 boats with people and 11 of them sank and the rest of them sailed all the way across to Greenland. And when they got there, it was all snowy and everyone was like, oh man, I can't believe this. Eric's done it again. There's no green here. Another classic prank. And Eric was like, unlucky suckers. <laughs> Looks like you're all stuck with me now. And so they all moved in and lived happily ever after. Uh, the end.